are some interesting spiritual lessons that can be taken uh, from the physical events in our scripture reading this morning. Um, we see that after the 5,000 have been fed, Christ instructed his followers, his disciples to just basically, I want you to take a journey. I want you to get from point A in your life to point B in your life. Wherever you are, I want you to be where I want you to be. And where I want you to be is point B in your life, whatever that might be. We also see that his followers accepted these instructions and they proceeded on this journey to get from point A to where Christ wanted them to be, which is point B. We can also get a lesson and we can see that on their journey to get from point A to where Christ wanted them in point B of their life, they encountered some difficulties. They encountered some problems, troubles, some challenges. And then we see that Christ was aware of their situation as they traveled this journey. He knew what was going on in their life. And then we see when Christ was with them, when Christ was with them, everything was calm and everything was peaceful. In our scripture reading this morning, there are some thoughts that I would like to just briefly speak on uh, for our consideration. Uh, there are some words that I would like to just zero in on and the words that I'm using gonna be words that was taken from the King James Version. And there's four of them. Contrary, winds, rowing, and toiling. The word contrary tell us that there's something that is in opposition to our efforts, our desires, our direction, and our purpose. It can be a hindrance. It can be a challenge to our Christian journey. But we want to look at rowing also. We want to look at rowing as a method of movement. Efforts are a way to get to our destination. The winds can be anything in our life that calls us to, again, toil, to work extremely hard, to exhaust a lot of physical and mental energy. There are some things come into play when we are struggling. We sometimes we get very tired, we get discouraged, we get depressed, we sometimes let our imagination get the best of us. We sometimes start blaming others for our shortcomings. We start blaming others for our situation, our failures. And we see things or we start believing things that are not factual. We become afraid. We're not, we're not alert. And sometimes we make mistakes. And sometimes we just make bad choices. In this lesson, we want to consider those winds that is in opposition to our efforts as we travel this Christian journey. As we're rowing to get to our destination, how we might deal with these winds and use them in our advantage. Verse 48, and I'm using the King James Version. And it says, and he saw them toiling and roaring for the winds was contrary unto them. Mark 6, 48. Now this was an actual experience of the early disciples on a little sea. These winds, these reverse winds necessitated for them to, to be toiling in their rowing, struggling in their rowing. But we know God knows best. God gave us the winds for distribution of heat and rainfall. I'm told that heat, when it comes from the sun, it stays where it falls. And it says the 
if it stayed there, the equator region would be too hot for life and the northern region would be locked into eternal frost. We have to realize and we know that we cannot have the winds, however, without having something sometime, you know, sometime for us and sometime they are against us. This keeps us uh, from being dull, and it keeps us from being morsel. Changes makes life interesting, and struggles sometimes make man strong. Sometimes we have to roll against contrary winds. The incident in our text is just an interesting analog to our boys through life. One is that man still has to battle contrary winds. Our world is one of exertion and struggle. We must face the elements of the material world and we have to wrestle with the forces of evil in the moral and spiritual world. Now God doesn't just lay restraint upon the winds, but rather permit them to blow against us. We find that every day. But at times he kind of quiets the winds in a brief succession from the storm so that we won't be overcome. But he doesn't do it as a permanent protection for man. There is no escape from opposing winds by simply being becoming a Christian. Children of God of all ages have had to face them. Uh, the winds of hate, misrepresentation, betrayal, persecution, miscalculated plans have blown against us with terrific fury. But in fact, the, the, the winds have always seemed contrary to everyone who had an earnest and high purpose in life, including the great like Joseph and Paul. Let's look at Joseph. Joseph was sold into slavery by envious, hateful brothers in Genesis 37 and 28, things just seem to be going wrong for Joseph. And then as a slave, he saw his good name ruined, uh, his spotless reputation smeared by a lying and conniving woman who sought to get even with him. But his refusal to become a secret love partner in Genesis 37, 7 through 20. Everything seemed to be getting worse for Joseph. But you know something? God was preparing him and lifting him to a higher and noble work as the food administrator and the second highest official in the Egyptian kingdom. In Genesis 41 and 38, this is what the Bible says. It says, and Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house and all of my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, see, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Posing wind was driving Joseph in the right direction. He just didn't know it at the time. How about Paul? Paul, an apostle, had to battle the scourging forces all his Christian life. And second... Corinthians, and I want to read that one. Second Corinthians, eleven twenty-four through twenty-seven. And uh, basically, Paul talks about the struggles in life, the danger that he had in life. Those things that was 
contrary to the things that he wanted to do. And when we read those verses, we find that Paul had a lot of problems, a lot of problems. Contrary winds, they just did blow and they required much toiling and rowing. But we find that Paul voyage in life on these temperate seas, that was a success. We find that in Philippians 1 and 12, the unconquerable hero victorious declared, but I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. They finally put Paul to death. But in his losing, he won. And in his dying, he lives. At first, winds discipline us. You know, sometimes our plans go wrong. We, 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 learn to, we learn to be more humble. And we learn to be more dependent upon God. Some of these aims that we have in our life teaches us to say sometimes, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that, James 4.15. But then we, we learn to put the trust where it belongs. God knows we need discipline, but sometimes it is grievous at the time, but it's good for us. No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it yields a peaceful harvest righteous to those who have been trained by it according to Hebrews 12 and 11. You know, sometimes there are some negative circumstances tries man's life. We find, we find that by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, according to Hebrews 11 and 17. It seemed to be an opposing command that required Abraham to offer his son on the altar, but we see that God stayed his hand. And then God says, now I know thy fear is God, according to Genesis 22, 12. Posing winds provide a opportunity for our greatness. That's if we have it, to shine as gold. Job is an inspiring example when we look at it. He was perfect and upright and one that feared God and shunned evil, the greatest of all the men of the East, according to Job 1, 1 through 4. Job said that when he had been tested and he had been tried, he said, I shall come forth as gold, according to Job 23, 10. And he did. Contrary winds can strengthen us by calling for more fortitude. God permit things to be fixed against us to teach us to set ourselves against them. But we have to prevail. We have to have perseverance. We have to keep fighting and struggling. But we have to prevail over those. We must battle all the way or else we'll come too weak to win. We wrestle with things which go wrong. In some distressing winds we must meet. Betrayed by some friends, Jesus had this heartbreaking experience. Judas gave Christ the kiss of betrayal, but Jesus had no animosity. Occasionally, we experience a Judas kiss. Christ is and should be our example. Persecution by enemies. This is another opportunity for us to be blessed, according to Matthew 5, 11. We cannot control the conduct of others, but we can't control our own conduct. We can pray for them. Jesus said, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Matthew 5 and 44. 
How about lying tongues, which hurt us? Sometimes it's in church work. Sometimes it's in our club. Sometimes it's in our business. Sometimes it's in our neighborhood. This was one of the suffering of Jesus. This is one of the most agonizing experiences, such as a foul and unfair way of fighting another. But we can meet it by blessing them that curse you. Again, Matthew 5, 44, by doing good to them that hate you. There's another win that we might face. Contrary win is a financial back set. It may be the loss of job. It might be a failure to get a promotion, an unwise investment. But we know that the world must keep turning. The Christian does not give up. We have to look at it and say, if I cannot do what I wish, then I must wish to do what I can. A man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possessed, according to Luke 12 and 15. We can look at it this way. There are advantages and disadvantages. One of the things that confront a lot of us is accidents which bring physical and financial injuries. Now this can teach us patience and the mastery of self. And thus Paul's words become our words. I have learned to whatever state I'm in, they are to be content, Philippians 4 and 11. The reverse also can be incentive to a new strong determination. And again, to say in the language of Paul, forgetting those things which are behind, I reach forward for those things which are before. Philippians 3 and 13. One of the things that we all will be confronted with and we'll all face is a loss of health. It may be ourselves or another in the family. In either case, it is a matter of grave concern. In most cases, lost health is regained. If it's not, then we can learn to live with the ailment and become stronger spiritually because of the handicap. This was true with Giles in whom John wrote, he says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thy mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. Third John 2. Obstacles can be turned into stepping stones. If we suffer from an ailment that cannot be cured, then we should accept it gracefully. Self acceptance to save us from useless resentment over what have happened to us. Victory over adversaries can bring our finest days. Paul had a thorn in the flesh in 2 Corinthians 12 and 2. But at the end of life, Paul wrote, I have fought a good fight, 2 Timothy four and seven. We often have disappointments in our life. Disappointments of various kinds. This has been always the common lot of man, including Paul, who said, wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us in 1 Thessalonians 2 and 18. So it is by making our plans and renewing our grit that disappointment become appointment and we have been blessed. Death of a loved one, always a crushing experience. We can find a comfort for bleeding hearts in Job's words. The Lord gave and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job 1 and 21. Sometimes faith is something, faith is sometimes lost when things go well. There's a danger of losing faith when things go well. Because they have no changes 
Therefore, they fear not God, according to Psalms 55, 19. Certainly prosperity and, un and untroubled lives have their own searching trials of faith. One of the disadvantages of good times, it can be forgetfulness of God. This was a tragedy era of the rich fool in the parable in Luke 12, 16 to 20. One of the strangest and unreasonable desires of human nature is the likelihood to leave God. Leaving God out when the sun is shining. Oh, but how quickly. We call upon him when the clouds form. You know, another concern for forget forgetfulness of God is pride and self-sufficiency. Uninterrupted prosperity has a tendency to in engender these feelings and they lead to a fall, according to Proverbs 16 and 18. In our conclusion this morning, I would like to just say stormy waves cause the anchor to take a stronger grip. Contrary winds can be instructive, they can be corrective, and they can be sanctifying and satisfying. No matter which way the wind blows, we can so set ourselves that it shall be to our advantage. If there are those that are with us this morning that would like to become a member of the church, become a member of the kingdom of God, you can do that by hearing God's word, according to John 5, 24. Believe, Hebrews 11 and 6. Repent of our sins, according to Luke 13 and 3, and confessing Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Acts 8, 37. Then being baptized, according to Acts 2, 38. If you are here, you might be able to, you can make, your, make that known by the chat room or raising your hand. And if there's anything that we can do for you, let it be known as we sing this song of invitation.